Mind-altering substances have long been a part of ancient cultures and societies. As we continue to uncover the stories of these ancient civilizations, piece by piece we can understand the role that opium and poppy played in history. Scattered in the tales and artifacts of ancient Greece, Rome, and Egypt are clues hidden in plain sight, which tell us just how opium was used in pre-modern times. It's time to put our detective hats on and dig into the mythical and spiritual realms of these societies. To trace the history of opium, we can start by looking at some of its first references in ancient Egypt. Knowledge of this ancient civilization is more limited than others, however, it can be deciphered that Egyptians took place in opium consumption, evidenced by opium which was discovered in base ring jugglet of supposed Egyptian origin. But where the presence of opium poppy becomes more definitive is in the paintings, tombs, and translated literature of ancient Egypt. The great pharaoh Tutankhamun, like many of the other kings of his time, was buried with some of his greatest possessions and riches. Fortunately for historians, the tomb of Tutankhamun was located in an underground location, preventing the raid of his tomb contents, preserving a piece of Egyptian history. In one of his many chests, we see scenes of the pharaoh and his wife, who is seen exchanging a bouquet of flowers, of which one is poppy. This is not the only evidence we see, as the pharaoh himself is buried in a well-preserved collar made up of poppy. These depicted pictures and direct use of poppy throughout the tomb allows us to get a glimpse as to the value and meaning of poppy in Egyptian culture. The prevalence of its use in the burial rites leads us to believe that opium symbolized death and rebirth to the afterlife. From the deciphered Ebers Papyrus, an Egyptian literature filled with magical remedies and incantations used in treating various illnesses, we see mention of the poppy plant. From this, we get a sense that Egyptians placed a higher value to spirituality in the sense of healing, and that the various hallucinogenic properties of opium poppy were recognized. While in this source, we see a secondary application of opium, ancient Egyptians seem to leverage the more spiritual aspect associated with the substance. This concept seems to hold true with the other societies known to utilize opium. The Roman poet Publius Ovidus Naso tells a mythological tale revolving around the creation of the world. The story, called Metamorphosis, is one of Ovid's many controversial works, in which he criticizes the hypocrisy of the gods who were idolized in early Roman society. Throughout this story, we see many references to the opium plant, who is associated with the god of slumber. Ovid also references the mythological substance known as lethe water, which has a strong association with the dead, who would consume the liquid and exhibit a type of memory loss. The god of sleep is usually represented as holding poppies with the left hand, and Ovid imagines that poppies flower before his cave where the river Lethe flows. As known, Lethe was the Hades River and thus belonged to the land of the dead. Ancient tales and mythologies tell us a lot about opium poppy. Based on this specific story, however, we can see the two main purposes or embodiments of poppy, as a symbol of death and as a substance eliciting slumber and forgetfulness. When we look at the well-preserved Endymion sarcophagus, there are intricate sculptures on all four sides, telling stories of life and death. The engravings depict the character Endymion, surrounded by the gods and presented with a magic elixir for eternal life. The woman beside him in the sculpture is holding poppies, tying the greater symbol of death and afterlife to the plant itself. More specifically, poppy became something more than the symbol of the mystery of birth, death, and rebirth. It was a symbol of death and reincarnation, as intended by the belief in the transmigration of souls. As we have seen poppies within Roman mythology and literature, this holds true with ancient Greek society as well. The two civilizations have many internal similarities and influences, especially in their idolization of the gods and mythology. The Greek goddess Demeter, goddess of harvest and fertility, was once worshipped at the Acropolis, with a temple dedicated solely to her. Recently uncovered at the Temple of Demeter are many legends and artifacts of the goddess, which tell stories of Poppy's use as a remedy for immense grief or sorrow, as its anesthetic properties could ease the suffering of an individual. Goddess Demeter, as seen here, is experiencing the loss of her daughter Persephone and offered Poppy by the gods to ease her suffering. Additionally, the physical depictions of the goddess herself holding poppies serves to further represent poppy as a personification of abundance and fertility. Aside from the more symbolistic references to the opium plant, 
Hippocrates of Cos, an extremely well-known Greek physician who would come to crown the infamous Hippocratic Oath, wrote the Hippocratic Corpus, in which an abundance of ailments and its associated remedies were documented. In these remedies, there are many instances where poppy is utilized as a component for medical remedies, some being in the treatment for women who are pregnant, as well as in the aid of pain. They also found that poppy was used in 13 other passages to treat symptoms associated with pain. The idea or perception of opium and its derivatives carry striking similarities throughout various cultural subgroups. Amongst ancient Egypt, Rome, and Greece, we see poppy used as a symbol for death, life, rebirth, and fertility. As these civilizations became increasingly progressive, the plant was leveraged for its anesthetic and medical properties, identified through the exploration of historical literature and artifacts. Opium was more than just a mind-altering substance. It provided these societies with a way to honor their dead and find peace amongst all the grief, putting their faith in a greater afterlife beyond the physical plane of existence. Thank you so much for taking the time to follow this documentary and a huge thanks to the following contributors, whom without this project would not be possible.